guys are I'm back. Going all in. But all I feel right, like the, the the regulatory, if you think about the framework, you know, it extends into education too. Like you can't go get an entry level job without a quote unquote college degree. How fucking useful is a college philosophy degree to someone that's trying to get an entry level job working at X, Y, or Z bank, right? Like it's um it's a bit absurd that the structure is set up so that there are whether it's you know government or not, but there is effectively a hurdle, um, which is this alternative to regulatory capture, but it's like call it embedded system, you know, capture. Like uh there is a significant kind of hurdle that you have to get through that costs a lot and the, the point of entry has gotten too high for most. And it really stalls things out and it's going to cause more damage than good. Well, and it's also been completely disconnected from the reality of your employment potential. People are going into debt for $200,000 in a liberal arts degree that ha provides no skill that is Do we all agree that that makes sense? Like, does anyone on this in this group argue for needing a bachelor's degree for everyone? No. Like, no I don't I mean, think, I, I think, I think it's useless. I, I, what do you guys think of ISAs, income sharing agreements? These have become kind of uh, Lambda School does them, a bunch of other schools. You, David, you saw a startup we just invested in that's doing them, and I think you mm -hmm. liked them at the demo day we did uh, with Kraft. Maybe, right. you know, this idea is who should take the risk for an education? And when you look at an ISA, right. an income sharing agreement, what they're saying is uh, the school takes the risk. They let you come to school for free. They give you what would be the equivalent of, let's say, a $15,000 coding camp or growth marketer uh, risk, then you pay double that amount over five, six, seven years as a percentage of your income. But if you don't get income, if you don't break 50K a year, you don't have to pay it back. And if you decide to go back to school or your income drops below 50, you don't have to do it. Can you imagine if a college had to make that promise? They should do it. They should start in college sports, but they should do it. Imagine you, you know, Duke basically went and recruited kids and said, listen, we're going to pay you to come to Duke. We're going to get you educate, educated. We're going to teach you how to play basketball better than anybody else. And we're going to take 5% of your future earnings. Yes or no? You're not going to have to go to boosters. You're not going to have to take money. You're not going to have to do any of this stuff on the side, but just be your best. Learn to play the game. We'll get you a reasonable education. We'll give you a good infrastructure and we take 5% of the back end. With a cap, I think, so you could cap the uh, upside, right? So or, you don't or take maybe there's unreasonable. maybe there's no cap, and and but, but why do we always have to care about all of this? Like it's like you know, it's like whatever. Maybe it's five percent for the rest of your life. You're going to pay the government fifty percent. You get nothing in return. So if you pay five percent and you get Coach K to teach you how to shoot a jumper, it's better than that, right? So why why isn't it possible? And I remember how people had this unbelievably paternalistic, allergic reaction to income sharing agreements when they were first talked about. They called them the, indentured servitude, and they compared slavery. them to slavery. And it was oh like, oh my god, oh, so insulting to. But the it's, concept no different, of it's no different than signing a contract with an agent to represent you when you first start out in any industry, music or or sports or uh, film or whatever. One, you could sign an agency agreement where the agent is your rep for 10, 20 years, right? I mean, some of those agreements can have long tails on them and that's effectively the same you know no, look at well, it's, it's even worse had a cap look know? at look right. at uh we, we can talk about this in a second but like you know did you see what happened with Chappelle the last couple of days where Chappelle, oh yeah let's go did you watch the video i loved it yeah the video is incredible the video is incredible so the 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 quick story on this is Chappelle basically did um he had a request he went to netflix and he said take down Chappelle show netflix took it down and he did a little stand up. It's on his Instagram. It's like 18 minutes. It's, it's fabulous as most Chappelle stuff. Peak is. Chappelle. Peak Chappelle. And he basically told this story, which essentially the punchline is like, you know, he signed a contract where he just got completely fucked. And he's like, this is happening every single day in so many markets. And so the idea that then you have actually a different market, which disrupts something by actually creating transparency and something reasonable is all of a sudden completely immoral it makes no sense to me so there's abuses happening all the time that is what the, the contract that Chappelle signed was indentured servitude he doesn't even have the rights to his name he cannot yeah, they create, took his name and likeness right yeah he, he, if you wanted right, so, to create so, the so, dave so, Chappelle so, show again he'd so, have to call it the dc so this is, show but this I'm is sorry, a perfect yeah. somebody owns his name what the fuck but in perpetuity this is, this, in all mediums and platforms this is, forever. This is a perfect tie back to the earlier statement about, uh, you know, do you have the appropriate kind of um, uh, understanding of the risk you're taking or the benefit that you're getting? Um, I think Kanye has been doing this whole thing about he doesn't own the masters to his music originally, right? At the moment that he signed that contract, when he signed over all the masters, you know, the master recordings and all the future revenue rights to his music, 
he was getting paid a ton of money in his mind at that time. He said, oh my gosh, I'm getting whatever it was. Let's say it's $5 million. I'm getting $5 million, most amount of money I've ever seen. It is absolutely worth me giving over the masters of this music and the future royalty rights to this music for 12 songs or whatever it is for me to get $5 million today and I can live an amazing life and it'll change everything for me. Who is to say that he was not, um, you know, of the appropriate sound mind and understanding to decide in that moment to take that $5 million and give up all future royalties to his music? Well, Chappelle's, Chappelle's argument was the people who are in that ecosystem are all friends, they're all working together, and they've commoditized the artist, and they collude to do this kind of uh, and upside limiting deals. And I think what makes Silicon Valley so special is that we collude the other direction. We want people to have equity participation and we want the social contract of Silicon Valley is, I'm giving you equity. I hope your your penny stock becomes worth $1,500 and that you create multi-generational wealth and no, you but, become an angel investor. But I don't know. Look, if, I, if I'm an angel investor or want to be an angel investor and some schmo tricks me into investing in his shitty company and I just lose $20,000, but I didn't know how to determine whether that company was shitty or not because I've never done investing before. Read my book. Is it for the government to regulate that circumstance and say, you know what, you need to be a quote unquote qualified investor to be able to discern a good company for a bad company or bullshit from not. And, well, the, same, make and the same for these contracts, right? Like, I mean, so, you know, we're making the argument, I think, for the, the, you know, the regulatory framework for preventing people from being able to have freedom of choice. And I think like earlier, you know, the, the case was made like people should be able to make fr have freedom of choice at any point. Why should the government kind of step in and make a decision think, for me? I think that there I'm not I'm not advoca advocating for government intervention. My, my only point is that there are morally reprehensible things that are happening today using contracts and that, you know, something like an income sharing agreement actually writes the ship in so many ways. That's and definitely the burden of capitalism. Ultimately, it, it, it devolves to that, right? Where like, oh, you're sick, you're, you have cancer, pay me a million dollars, I'll give you this drug. So uh, Hollywood's a little bit of its own beast where there's all these gatekeepers and the gatekeepers are always trying to get control over, you know, the creative product. And so, yeah, like, you know, signing contracts with those sharks is uh, always a dangerous thing to do. Um, I think Silicon Valley is very different. We have much more of a culture of, of equity. I think the income sharing agreements are much more in that vein. And I think they're a great idea for like any trade that demonstrably increases your earning power, right? So the beauty of Lambda School is they pay for you to get an education being a coder. It then increases your salary and they get a piece of that. That's like a win-win for everybody. I think where this goes, if these ISAs are successful is that every trade that's valuable will get its own ISA type school and then that gets peeled out of a university education. So what's left for colleges to do? It's basically, you know, all the stuff that doesn't add value. They're museums. They're, they're basically like these monasteries again, right? They go back to being monasteries, not places where you get skills. We need to set, we need to celebrate vocational capability. Cause I think like, you know, we have, we have so celebrated this mythical bachelor's degree and it just means fucking nothing. It yeah. like it doesn't learn a really trade. Learn a trade, and that's just as frankly that should be as respected or more. But in in the American culture, you don't do that right now. I've never understood that. If you go, for example, to different countries around the world, Europe's a good example actually of this um, because it's the closest analog in terms of quality of living to America. There's a real celebration of uh, people who choose vocational tradecraft because there's an entire educational infrastructure that you can onboard yourself into. You can become a skilled person. And you can have a really good, decent life. And, and there's uh, pride in the work. And there's pride in that work. And in America, yeah. you know, you covet this piece of paper. The piece of paper is really just a scam that allows, you know, administrators to basically pay themselves millions of dollars and or run an asset management business as a, the Trojan horse of that purpose. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, I don't know. It's, I, I just think it's, I just think the America. most amazing thing about these companies, I've, I've been digging into them because I'm looking for more to invest in. And, um, these company, these, uh, companies that are ba the trade schools that are basing themselves on ISIS and there are ones who are doing welding and plumbing and all kinds of different things. And there are ISA platforms that are providing ISAs to any school that wants them and doing like the sort of AWS of ISAs. Anyway, these, um, for what this firm told me was, Inside of one of these trade schools, they spend 50% of their time on placement, 50% on education. 
and that at a college they spend 99 point x amount of time on uh, the education and less than one percent on placement which kind of attracts right i mean when we went to college i don't know if it's changed much but the career services center was like this two-person office like in the worst part of campus a and they don't th when you're doing an isa if you accept more people who are unqualified and can't aren't ready for the education or are not motivated for it it works against you because they're not going to pay back the isa so you then get sharper you know, you sharpen the blade of who gets accepted. You start accepting the right people. These colleges, they would accept anybody who would come in and take the loans. That right. was your qualifier is did you pass well, your loan? The ISA as a service idea is a brilliant idea. A I, I would idea. invest in that. I, I like that idea as an investment way better than running one of these uh, schools, you know, that, that that's basically issuing the ISAs themselves. But how amazing is that? that we live in a country where people are willing to you know as a movement now people are willing to fund your education because they know it's going to increase your earning power and then they'll get paid on the back end that's like fantastic yeah. and like that's all like happening all that innovation is happening right now without the government needing to get involved or go a big government yeah, loan and, program and the hysterical people are getting left saddled people is are getting calling saddled it with all this debt. literally like the voxes and the new york times of the world and uh, it was, uh, yeah, but I mean, I think indentured servitude it. is having a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar debt that you've got to pay down. You can never get rid of in bankruptcy for the rest of your life. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's real indentured servitude. Yeah. I think yes. the problem is that you know, East Coast left leaning um, editorial Elites. publications um, they have to themselves justify their one hundred and ninety thousand um, dollar bachelor philosophy from Oberlin College. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, if you if you, you take that, many, you know, Shamat, Oberlin is the number one listener base we have on this podcast. Yeah, Shit. you just lost. <laughs> yeah, Come no, on, but you're man. right. Once you've taken out every valuable trade and and moved them from a university where you got to pay a hundred thousand a year to a, an ISA where it costs you nothing, like what's left? Is this going to be people studying philosophy? Foucault? Oh yeah, people intersectionality studies. Stu intersectionality <laughs> studies. Yeah, they'll, they'll be studying the past. They'll be studying the past. <laughs>